Your Trapper Outdoors is brought to you by Who's Your Trapper Supply. K3 Outdoors, manufacturer of the Hag Bracket and Body Trap Spring Clip. Leatherwood Creek Trapping Sense. Who's Your Trapper Deer Sense. And Leatherwood Wildlife Art. Welcome to episode 11, season 11. So on this episode will be our follow-up to uh, with Matt. So this will be um, uh, show number two with Matt um, here in Indiana. So uh, I th- I, I, by the comments, I think you guys enjoyed a week ago. Um, and um, I think you'll enjoy this episode as well. It's kind of cool that um, where Matt traps is significantly different in geography and landscape than what we have up here. Up here, we're pretty flat ground, lots of farm, open farm country, and where Matt's at, he's got farm country for sure, but he's got that rolling hills and and definitely more um, various geography. So anyways, hope you enjoy that that episode with Matt. Um, once we get done with um, this episode, Justin and I'll do a little bit of sem- semi-live, an episode or two, then we'll finish out the season with Arkansas. Uh, and don't... And, Don't forget the um, Trap House podcast, which is basically every other week uh, opposite, you know, the opposite weekend of the show. Um, Keep an eye out for those. They've been quite popular. We we, um, here lately, I I think we've had some really good, interesting guests. So um, lastly, I want to mention the contest. Um, The show's your bottle contest. All the information's on the homepage of the website. Check that out for all the details. Basically get a chance to win hundred dollar gift card. Hope you enjoy the show. Another coon. Matt's down there remaking that coon set and you have a 220 right here in this tile in this culvert. <laughs> Nail another coon. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer set. 220. Yep. That's a typical Indiana coyote. It's still a cool sight. It's still cool. Is this a county road? Nope. What is that? He is caught okay. No, he ain't. Out number two of the day. This is a remake, Matt? Yeah, it's a remake. From a coyote? From a coyote, yep. For all you guys in Montana and Wyoming, and I bet you guys wish you had these coyotes right here. These red, <laughs> these red ones. <laughs> these beautiful eastern reds. <laughs> we'll trade you any day. go starts, <laughs> it's his fault this morning he talks about it's a good possum night not you know all this you heard it right it brings so, the negativity I mean, down we've had a we've had a pretty good pretty good day i mean we've caught a couple coyotes we've caught a red fox some raccoons some possums and you know a skunk that sort of thing i said man i'm feeling pretty good i said we've not had to deal with any bobcats i mean we're out in a pasture that's 
there's nothing around and we get up here and I just lost it. I was like, you have freaking got to be kidding me. <laughs> if I was gonna catch a cat, this would be the place. This doesn't this look like Kansas or wherever? I mean, this looks like a Kansas location right but here. Over the last couple of years, I mean, this is just a great coyote crossing. Yeah. I mean, I've caught a lot of coyotes here. Um, never a cat. So now I've caught a cat here. So. Thankfully, these guys are with me and they are going to help me turn it loose. <laughs> so there's that. Successful. Well, thanks thanks for the help. <laughs> he's loose. He just doesn't know he's loose. Big Tom. There he goes. He's gone. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. I'll let you do that. That's, that's funny. <laughs> Number three. And he doesn't want to talk to us. Well, the edge of a cornfield here that meets up this, I don't know, brush line. Um, it all kind of converges right here where we're at. I've caught them here in the past, so it was just a proven location. So, you remember what lure you're using? Yeah, it was Vixen Top Dog and Vixen Elixir here, and uh, Coyote urine. That's what we used. So, yeah. I kind of feel bad. It's supposed to have a rider today, Kevin. Kevin T. Kevin T. Shout out to Kevin T. Shout out to Kevin T, man. I wish you were here. It's been a pretty good day. Got some coyotes, got a red fox, got a bobcat, coons, possums, a skunk. So it's been a good day. Trapping products by J3 Outdoors, the most versatile and efficient trapping devices on the market. That's it. Well, what was the grand total there? Uh, what did we get? Three coyotes, a red fox, and a bobcat coons and some possums and a skunk yeah. so a pretty mixed bag and a possible beaver and a possible range. beaver to be determined here we are beaver trapping <laughs> <laughs> got a beaver way down there on the you're using the fiberglass rods there yep hags bracket and beaver lure Yep. Very nice. Definitely. Right. Pull him out. Let's see the prize. Little one. There's a little one. Yeah. But it's a beaver nonetheless. Using TS 85s. TS 85. So, yeah. There we go. Hag bracket. And the universal lock he's got there. Yep. 
pretty slick. Pretty slick, works really good. You got a caster mount set, yep. beaver gland. Yep. That'll do it. Very effective set. Beaver are so, t you know, territorial that they'll just check out everything. Yeah. And I think another set. beaver's in here messing around on their turf. Yeah, pretty simple set. It'll work. A little bit of uh, destruction we have here. Some, some beaver chewings. Fairly fresh. Been a lot of hip hoop pruned on those things. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I've ruined a lot of radios at work. Yeah. There's no trap here, so let's see what's happening. All right, set off. Boo! <laughs> it's been fun. Yep. Matt, busy day. Thanks for having us on the yep. line. Yep, yep. appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Yep. Got a mixed bag today, a little bit of everything. Yep. And we did get to see, caught several bobcats over the years, but never had one in a trap in Indiana. We just don't really have them. Right. So we have big numbers around in our, in our county. So Matt deals with them a lot down this way. Too much. <laughs> we and need I, a season. And, and I was bragging to these guys earlier. I said, man, we've made it most of the day. We've not had to mess with a bobcat. Man, it's been a good day. <laughs> And it wasn't five minutes, it was the next trap. <laughs> Literally the next trap, we had a bobcat. And Matt was not really very happy about that. Well, <laughs> I may have said a word or two I probably shouldn't have said. <laughs> it but happens. It happens. But I had some pretty good help getting it turned loose. So, yeah. so it went pretty good. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, good day. And I, yeah. I kind of wondered last night, because it was super windy. Oh, it was horrible last night. So I, you always wonder what animals are doing or thinking or how they're moving or not moving. So clearly some moved. Yeah, some. So. Yeah. So it was a good check. Yeah. We'll do it again sometime. Sounds good. All right. Trapping has been a lifelong passion of mine. Back in 1976, I started Hoosier Trapper Supply, and we've had the privilege of 
serving trappers across this great country for all these years. We carry a complete line of traps and trapping equipment. You can check us out at HoosierTrapperSupply.com. Somebody had a question on the on fur handling, um, considering the present market and how much effort you should put into it. So as long as you do a good job, you're fine. You don't have to do a crazy good job. Uh, none of this stuff's worth a whole lot. Uh, for instance, if you're selling Gronwalds, they have everything tanned and then they sell it tanned. So they're not super concerned that that little thing looks pristine, like, you know, maybe when you ship to NAFA or whatever. Uh, I think if you're still shipping to an auction house, I would probably do a, do a nice job. But then again, I mean, you're still limited by just a very, you know, a, a $10 raccoon, for instance. How much effort do you want to put into a $10 raccoon versus a $30 raccoon? So if, if the, if the uh, level of the market definitely dictates maybe the effort that you're going to put into it. So with that said, when they're grading them, you've got to do a good enough job that you're going to get the benefit of the doubt. So the, on the judgment call skins, if you've got a poorly handled skin and you got one that's well handled, then, and they're basically the same quality, the well handled skin will not get the benefit of the doubt. I mean, the, the poorly uh, handled skin will not get the benefit of the doubt. The good, the, the well handled skin will, will get the benefit of the doubt and possibly stay in the grade that maybe you thought it should go or even go up. So the other thing is on, it, on the beaver market right now is quite good. And um, for instance, grown walls, they have uh, fleshing capabilities, whatever. I would just sell them green. Skin them, fold them. You can look up a grown world's information and then freeze them and just sell them flat. Um, considering the effort that goes into putting up a beaver um, and the time, I would just sell them skinned and green and or skinned and frozen. Um, unless you just like doing it, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, there is something to be said for putting up fur and having a big picture at the end of the season. Um, but if that's not that important to you, I would I would sell them green. So. Um, on the beavers, it's just right now, it's just not paying that extra money to justify putting them up if that's your perspective. If you like putting up fur and you want the picture at the end of the season, a lot of people enjoy that, including me. I just go ahead and put them up. So, um, you know, that all kinds of depends on perspective. But right now, I would say there's no super good reason to just go over the top for fur healing. So, as long as you do a good job get it cleaned up, um, you'll be just fine. So hope that helps. What we got here, Matt? Okay, so um, a couple of the guys I know, uh, the Shake Boys, Jared and Mark and Kevin, um, those guys have a pretty good way of putting drags on their traps for coyotes. They trap around a lot of quarries and, and pretty rough areas. So what they have done is basically have put a tap con in here and they have a washer, if you can see that above and below the chain link there and run the tap con in the piece of limestone. You wanna use limestone, not sandstone because the sandstone will break right. and this this will last. And you wanna use a, a pretty good chunk of limestone and they have used them for years and they work pretty good so something to think about if you got an area where you can use one of these and you can leave it out there for several years at a time if you're going to trap the same place i guess it would it would deteriorate over time but you could you could run that in a big log or sure whatever so sure. and if you know if your top con does get loose after a couple years you can simply just bore a new hole and Put, put a new Tapcon right back in. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Trapping plays a very important role in modern day wildlife management. Professional wildlife biologists monitor fur bearer populations to maintain a healthy and sustainable harvest of this important renewable natural resource. Trapping provides recreation and income for licensed trappers across this country.